the Buffalo Bills fired their offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. Ken Dorsey. And mm-hmm. it's not yeah. the only change that's being made. We already see a change at AM and Mississippi State. And I believe probably out of all the changes that will be made, there is a good offensive coach out there somewhere. Let me ask you this. What about Josh Heupel bringing in a fresh set of eyes? Uh, just in general, what are your what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts are that he probably would not do it. Uh, here's what he's got to do. He's got to bring in a quarterback that can run his system. I think that's what's missing. I, I don't think it's a flawed system. Uh, it's been too proven. I mean, even when you look at this year's team going into the Missouri game, they were averaging over 34 points a game. That That's not bad. But uh, I, I believe they've got a quarterback that does not – fit their system to operate it at an optimum level. So now if we're having this conversation next year with Nico Imaleva, then I would say, yeah, you need a fresh set of eyes. I'd put a fresh set of eyes on the defense. I I thought the defense was awful against Missouri. Uh, But I just, I I think with Milton, he has some limitations in running this off, excuse me, and run this offense. So, um, and I I can't, this is not an offense where Hypo is going to turn it over to somebody. Now, I know that Jeff Levy has run something similar. So if I were to get a fresh set of eyes, I might take somebody like that who could tweak it. But I um, I think the bigger problem is having the right quarterback. Interesting. Uh, Caleb, I uh, hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm sorry I didn't uh, properly introduce you. He is uh, – the king of Caleb's. I don't know what that mean, means for Caleb Giroux, who also writes for Off the Hook Sports. But uh, he's not listening right now because he's at the uh, media opening. So let me ask you, Caleb, what about a fresh set of eyes? So I think it's uh, Jimmy brought it up. It's kind of a two prong approach here. One, should he do it? One, would he do it? I tend to agree with Jimmy. I don't think he would. Uh, should, I think, is debatable. Yeah, I don't think. If he does bring a fresh set of eyes, I think it should be on the defensive side. I think Heupel is – now, you may think it's to a fault, Dave, and Jimmy, you may actually think it's to a fault too, so you guys tell me, but Heupel's very stubborn, but he's also very – you. some people say confident, a little bit cocky, you know, believes that he is smarter than anybody else who's coaching football right now and believes that he doesn't have to listen to anybody else offensively. And I'm with Jimmy. I think it's about having the wrong quarterback. I think deep down, Heupel knows he has the wrong quarterback running his system. He knows he misjudged Milton, but I think he wants to finish out the season with Milton because Mm -hmm. he doesn't just have uh, the right quarterback to run his system next year. He has a quarterback that was created in a lab specifically to (laughs) run. (laughs) So, I mean, the way Tim Tebow was created, wasn't Tim, uh, Jimmy, I always use this analogy. You know, Tim Tebow was basically created in a lab to run Urban Meyer spread offense, right? If you could construct a quarterback to run Urban Meyer spread offense, you create Tim Tebow. Nico Iamaliava is that for Josh Heupel. Literally a quarterback created yeah. to run that offense. And and I think that lab was in Harvard. So, <laughs> yeah, they, and they got this one right. So I, I do think he's very well suited to this. I've heard nothing but good things about him. Now, he needs to put on some weight because he looks pretty fragile out there. He looks like uh, he did one solid hit and he could break a bone. But um, I think that he um, he's accurate with his throws. He's a quick decision maker. He's a good runner. He's an elusive runner. He's got pocket presence. Now, we haven't seen a lot of this proven, right, because he hadn't played enough. But this is based on my conversations with people that have watched him. So I think that the offense will uh, be very good next year. Now, having said that, here's the caveat. How many of these offensive linemen are going to return next year? Hmm. If he's behind an offensive line that's but that is a C, then then I don't know that anybody would be successful, including Hinton Hooker. So they got to make sure this offensive line is fixed. I so will say this: every offensive lineman except two could return. I don't think they will, but they could because of a COVID year. In yep. fact, there are about 18 players on the team that are listed as seniors that could return because of a COVID year or a medical red shirt. In the case of, uh, uh, of uh, I think it's uh, Brew McCoy. But anyway, uh, they've got a number of players that could return. We don't know what that looks like. But they've got to make sure they have at least an adequate offensive line next year. Very true. Click that like and subscribe button. We greatly appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, brought to you by Andy Mason, Andy Mason Real Estate.com in Knoxville. Over 40 years of experience in East Tennessee. 
the absolute best service and best prices in the biz. Andy Mason, realestate.com for your real estate needs. Jimmy, philosophically, is there something wrong with Josh Heupel bringing up a Kelsey Pope, uh, uh, promoting a Joey Halsley and not seemingly going out and doing much of a search? Do you, do you think philosophically there's anything wrong with that? Or is that just Josh Heupel making sure that there aren't a lot of naysayers in the offensive meeting room. I that I see that from two angles. One, I think he wants to promote people that have done a good job on his staff. The other thing is, I can't ignore, he brought in Alex Golish, and they had not worked. I don't believe they had worked that much before. And I thought Golish brought a few tweaks to the offense. I, I, I think where they miss Golish some is in the preparation – and figuring out this is a good mismatch for us. We can create this. Not necessarily the play calling, but the preparation for the game. I don't know if he's got that with his staff. Maybe he does. Maybe Halsley brings that. Maybe Pope brings some of that. But I thought Golish was uh, beneficial in helping them, saying we're going to run this set and we're going to run this crossing route and their defensive backs are going to do this. Therefore, Jalen Hyatt's going to be open. Uh, I think that Golish helped with that. So from that perspective, new set of eyes, maybe somebody on the staff that sees things a little bit differently. It's a tweak. It's not an overhaul. And I think maybe that could help this offense. I See, the thing that I would go with on that is we keep bringing up – we keep wondering if Alex Golish was a big loss, but Josh Heupel's best season that he's ever had, at U, which was his first at UCF, he didn't have Alex Golish that year. Jeff Levy was his offensive coordinator, and Jeff Levy doesn't even really mm -hmm. run this offense. I think it's very clear this is Josh Heupel's offense. A, an offensive coordinator under Josh Heupel is like a defensive coordinator under Kirby Smart. And I or think, Nick Saban. Or Nick Saban. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Um I think Saban does respect Kevin Steele, though, who is at Alabama right now. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's Josh Heupel's offense. It's the the offensive coordinator title is almost in name only. Um, and so I don't know if he really I don't think it's about Alex Golish. I, again, I, I go back to it, but Jimmy hit the nail on the head. I do think it's just pretty simple. I think two things. Tennessee still has depth issues and they had more injuries this year on offense than they had last year because the mm -hmm. roster is still not where it needs to be because nobody inherited a bigger mess in Tennessee history than Josh Heupel when he took over in 2021. And so with more injuries this year, they were already going to be limited. And then they also have a quarterback not fit to run the system to its um, degree. The other point I, I want to bring up is, the only knock I would say on Josh Heupel, and I don't know if this is about not having a fresh set of eyes, and we're going to see this this weekend with Dante Thornton and Brew McCoy both hurt. I think Josh Heupel's missed on some wide receivers that he's been recruiting. I'm going to be honest. I don't think he's evaluated mm -hmm. the talent at receiver well because let's Cedric Tillman and Jalen Hyatt fell into his lap. Whatever you want to say about Jeremy Pruitt, he and Kevin Hendon Hooker fell into his lap. The entire offense last year fell into Heupel's lap. And – the question is, can Heupel keep winning when people he chooses are going to start succeeding? Well, you say they fell into his lap. I say he developed them. Okay. Because Tillman had eight catches in three years. Uh, Hendon Hooker was a reject from Virginia Tech. They didn't want him back. So, But I get your point. Uh, on the receivers, here, here's what's interesting to me. They felt like this Laycock guy was going to be a stud, and he doesn't see the field. Now, it, and there have been some other receivers that they've recruited that haven't played to this level. they got a five-star receiver coming in next year. How good is he going to be in this system? So they have not developed this collection of receivers like they did, Hyatt and Tillman and, and some others. But it hurt that they lost Brew McCoy. Uh, and, and then now, they've, now Thornton's kind of figured it out, and now they're losing him. So they don't have the talent at that, that spot that they need. Uh, but I, I will say this, Caleb, from what I'm hearing, you're saying the goal is had zero impact on the offense. Uh, I'm saying he had some, but it's it's hard to gauge. Do, do they go from 46 points to 32 because they don't have goalage? No. But I, I think he contributed to the game planning, which was beneficial. So I'm not I'm not saying that they would be great with with goalish. I'm saying that I think he helped them with some uh, with some game planning. Well, yep. Jimmy, to bolster your point, just one last thing, Dave. Uh, I will say to bolster your point, 
I do think it's sometimes a red flag when someone is a, in a position for a long time and is not promoted. And Joey Hawsley was a position coach or an analyst for about 12, 13 years and was yeah. never promoted. Yeah, that's and true. You, you, you always question that. <laughs>